I'm Jo, welcome back to Country Cat Designs. Um, I just wanted to make a short video discussing bag making on a domestic sewing machine. So I know a lot of people like to use an industrial machine, which is awesome. Um, but if you haven't got space for an industrial, you haven't got the budget for an industrial, um, or you just don't want an industrial, then you can make bags on your domestic sewing machine. Now, if you've um, been watching my channel for a while, you'll have seen all the bags that I've made using this machine because um, this is my only sewing machine. So this is an old domestic machine. It's a Bonina 930 record and it's from the 1960s. Uh, my grandmother bought it new and she gifted it to me recently. Um, prior to that I was making bags on a brother sewing machine that I got for £110 on um, Amazon. So nothing special. The only other machine I do have is a Singer 201, which I very rarely use. Um, it's really just um, ornamental. The Singer 201 is from the 1920s and is an amazing machine, especially for bag making. So my first tip, if you're going to be sewing with domestics, is vintage machines. They are better. They are always seem to be better. So this one's from the 60s, my other one's from the 20s. They're just brilliant. Um, this one... I believe if you buy it now, secondhand is kind of expensive. I think somebody said to me they saw one on eBay for almost a thousand pounds, so that is a lot of money. Um, but my Singer, I bought for 15 pounds, including the table that it comes on, um, and I just bought it from a guy locally. So if you can get one of those, it's just brilliant. I know a lot of bag makers, um, a lot of my testers use Singer 201s, so they're brilliant. So basically, I wanted to chat in this video about like, my tips and tricks to successfully sewing on a domestic sewing machine. So first of all, I'm going to show you a couple of the bags that I've made so you can see what kind of things your machine is capable of. Okay, so to start with, this is uh, my Vordenza sewing pattern and this is one of the ones that I made on this machine. Now, because I'm using a domestic and this pattern has rather bulky areas up here where the strap connectors meet these seams, I used just a cotton on the top. So whenever I make these ones, I just use a cotton or a canvas on top. I use a thicker material like cork or vinyl on the base because there's no thickness down there. It's absolutely capable of sewing through. But if I wanted to make this with all cork up here, my machine would really struggle. So that's my first major tip is read the pattern through before you start and check out the materials that you think your machine is capable of using. You've got to know your machine's capabilities, and I know that mine would not be able to sew through here, definitely not easily anyway, um, if it was all cork or all vinyl. So that is really, really important. So this is another bag that I made. This is my Vexa pattern. Now, again, you can see I've used cork, the thicker material, for the base. Um, and for the handles. So sort of like high wear areas of the bag. I love to use cork or vinyl. That makes it last longer. Um, things like this, zip tabs, I always use cotton. It's gonna get start getting bulky around here and my domestic machine is not gonna love it. So these sort of areas are the areas that you wanna look for if you're doing a pattern and think, yeah, once, once that's all built up, there's gonna be a lot of layers and that's when you need to make sure that you're using a material that your machine can handle. Okay, so when it comes to materials, um, I use cork a lot. I love cork. So this is cork fabric, if you've not used it before. Um, it's generally, generally about one millimeter thick. It's much easier to sew than most vinyls. Um, it's not slippery or anything like that. So it doesn't like, it doesn't stick. It's really nice to get a nice easy finish. And it's just, it's not as bulky as vinyl once you start layering it up. So cork is my fav favourite uh, material to use, but it's expensive, very, very expensive. Um, generally like 40 pounds a metre. Most of it comes from Portugal. Um, so that can be a little bit difficult to get hold of because of Brexit, if you're in the UK. Um, so it's kind of like a luxury product. I love it but I generally would not make a whole bag out of it because it would just cost me too much. Okay, so vinyl is a much cheaper alternative. Um, 
this is a few of the vinyls that I use. Now, this is where it's really important to know your machine because there's a lot of vinyls that my machine would not cope with. Uh, but there's also a lot that it will cope with. So you just kind of need to try out different things. If you can get hold of um, people's like off cuts, you know, people sometimes on the sewing groups on Facebook, they'll sell like their scraps of vinyl. You only need like a little piece and you can test it all out and then figure out which brands work on your machine before you kind of commit to buying a load. So this is called Mora and it's made by Emmeline Bags. This is the tan color, but she's got loads of different colors for it now. And you can see it's not too thick. It's, it's really good. This is really good for my machine. There's still areas of a bag where it gets really bulky that I probably wouldn't use this, but I can do most things in this. Now, the way I test vinyl is I basically try and make a short strap. So if you've ever made like a crossbody strap, you fold it, you fold it in to the center line, fold it again, and you basically end up with four layers thick of vinyl. So I get an off, off cut, I make sure it's four layers thick, and then I sew through it. If I can get through that without, without much trouble, then I know that this vinyl is going to work for my bags and on my machine. If I'm struggling with this, then I know I'm not going to cope because later on I might have even six layers building up. So, so then I'll give that vinyl a miss. Okay, so that's the Mora vinyl. It's lovely, lovely to work with. It is a little, little bit sticky. So it's slightly more challenging because it's, it's also a little bit stretchy. Um, it's a bit more challenging than the Rex vinyl, which Emmeline also do. Now the Rex vinyl is the easiest vinyl I've ever found to sew. So it's got barely any stretch at all. It's not sticky. You can sew this like a dream. It's so easy and my machine loves it. So those are the two from Emmeline that I use. I've also recently been sent this vinyl by Fala Creative Designs. I love this vinyl. It works really nicely on my machine. It's a bit like the Mora. It's just the tiniest bit sticky. A good Teflon foot really helps or a walking foot. Um, unfortunately, my Teflon foot is terrible and just sticks to everything. So. If you can get like a decent Teflon foot for your sewing machine, it will really, really help when you're doing vinyl. Because otherwise it just kind of, um, it sticks under your machine and you can end up with uneven stitching. So that's all my vinyl and cork. Now, another thing that really, really helps is to use nylon zips. So um, if you follow me on Instagram or anything like that, you'll know I love my nylon zips. I stock a lot of nylon zips. Um, it's metal look, so it looks like metal, but it's not. It's very easy to sew through. Oh, I've got a cat chasing the zip, sorry. Um, <laughs> it's really easy, you can just kind of sew through. I still, I take my time over it, I don't charge over the zip, just in case, because you could still break a needle if you've got loads and loads of layers, and then this as well. Um, but yes, it's just brilliant for sewing on a domestic machine. So that's another thing to watch out for. Um, webbing, if you want an easier time with your straps and you just don't want to make straps, webbing is great. It's strong, it's really durable. It lasts a bit better than like fabric straps if you were gonna do just fabric stra straps. Um, yeah, it's really good. And my domestic machine can sew through three layers without any problems, which means you can wrap it over a hook and fold over the raw edge and sew that down. So webbing is another great thing to use. Now, when you're sewing different materials, um, always change your needles. So this is something my grandmother taught me. She said, always, always use the right needle. That's how you look after your machine. So I change my needles very regularly. Now, what I tend to use, I use Microtex needles if I'm sewing cork or vinyl. I have these in size 90 and 100, and Microtex is brilliant for those materials. Then I use universal needles. If I'm doing like a lining on a bag, I'm using size 70. If I'm doing the top stitching, I can go up to a size 110. I mean, I can go up to a huge needle. Depends how many layers I'm going through, what materials I'm using, 
but make sure you change your needle out as your thickness and materials are changing. Don't just stick with your size 70 needle the whole way through because your machine is really going to struggle. So with a domestic machine, I feel like you need to give it all the help it can get. And changing my needle regularly is one of the ways I do that because needles will blunt over time. So if you replace it with a new needle, it's gonna be sharper. It's gonna be less work for the machine to get through all those layers because the needle will do the work for it. So change them out. Don't wait for your needle to break. <laughs> That's not a great idea, but just uh, change it out regularly. It will really, really help your machine to succeed. Okay, one more um, fabric that people love to use. I've noticed it discussed a lot on like forums and stuff is waterproof canvas for linings. Now, I know a lot of people like 600 denier waterproof canvas, which is great if you're using it in the exterior and you want a lot of structure. But if you're using a domestic sewing machine and you want lining waterproof canvas, then 300 denier is just perfect. So I don't interface this. I just cut it out and just sew straight away with it. It's got just about enough structure in itself. You know, I'm using maybe Peltex or foam or something like that in the bag, so I don't need to add anything to this. And I get that from Little Stitch or Sews. Something else I do for my machine, I change my tension regularly. So if I'm going through lots of layers or thick fabrics, I increase my tension quite a lot. I find that really helps me to get that neat finish. Otherwise my stitches can look really messy. Um, and my machine seems to struggle to get through the layers. So I definitely would recommend adjusting your tension, particularly when you're top stitching. Uh, service your machine regularly. That's really, really important. Uh, mine's just got back from its service this week. I also make sure I clean it out regularly. Just take really good care of it because when you're bag making on this machine, it's, it's putting a lot of work in. So you need to kind of pay it back and look after it. Okay, so when you're making a bag, say for instance, you're making this Vaudenza, this has got foam basted to the main panels. So what you can do, if you think you're gonna struggle on these sort of areas, is you, when you, before you sew the foam in, you just trim the top corner of the foam out. And that means that you end up with no foam in this very top section just here. So you're not trimming a lot out, just a little bit before you actually even attach it. And that's just gonna reduce the bulk here immensely. It's really good. Also, before I top stitch, I trim the foam out of the top before I turn the bag out. That again helps because it means less bulk in this seam when I'm top stitching. Another option when you're basting foam to your main panels is to zigzag stitch the edges. That is a great way to kind of compress the bulk. So that's another option. When you're sewing your zips in, make the most of being able to have a movable needle if you, your machine has it. So mine, I can move it either way. And what I do is when I'm sewing zips in to get a nice straight finish, I don't use a zip foot, I use my standard foot and I move the needle over because it gets nice and close. And that way the presser foot is gonna give you a really nice neat finish because it's gonna be butted up against the zip and it's gonna give you a nice straight finish on your zip. Another thing that you would have seen me use regularly if you watch my video tutorials is my hump jumper. Now, hump jumpers are absolutely essential to sewing on a domestic, if you ask me. You can put it underneath your presser foot and ensure that when you're going over a bulky seam that you get a straight finish, you don't get any skipped stitches. So I use this in pretty much all of my tutorials. So you can just visit my YouTube channel and watch one of my tutorials, you'll see, you'll see me using this. It's very easy to use and it just costs a few pounds. Something else you would have seen me using in my tutorials is fabric glue and double-sided tape. Um, I find that, you know, I need to concentrate when I'm sewing my, I need to make sure that my machine is, you know, doing exactly what I want it to do. If I've glued or secured things into place before I stitch them, I get a much better finish and that way I can just concentrate on what I'm doing and I don't have to worry about things like moving slightly or becoming unfolded and things like that. But with double-sided tape, just be careful that you're buying tape that you can sew through because a lot of them you can't sew through. Okay, so my, my top tip would be read the pattern through the whole way before you start. 
look for areas that your machine might might struggle with and make sure that you make little adjustments so that it can cope and it's got the best chance of getting through. Um, so for example, if I'm making card slots, I make sure that I use a thin non-woven um, interfacing rather than a standard woven because it'll be thinner. And when you've got all of those layers bunched up, it's gonna be thick for your machine to sew through. So it's just kind of thinking things through, just being one step ahead of yourself. And if you get really, really stuck with things like straps, just use rivets. If you've got loads and loads of layers because you decided to make a vinyl strap and you get to this point and you think, I really can't get through that, um, don't be afraid to use some rivets because they are brilliant and they will secure it in place. If you're using a proper hand press, that really helps and make sure that your rivets will stay in place forever. Okay, I think that's everything. So if you've got more tips on how to sew on a domestic sewing machine, um, just let me know. Drop them in the comments. I'd love to hear what ideas you guys have found helps. Um, but for me, yeah, I don't think that having a domestic can, needs to hold me back at all. Just make sure you know your materials, make sure that you think ahead and you can absolutely succeed at sewing bags on a domestic sewing machine. Is that all right? Hi Phoebe. Got a couple of meows in there, didn't you babe? Do you want me to get her chasing a zip? <laughs> <laughs>